Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com. You know, every year my garden gets a little bit bigger, and every year I say I'm not going to make it every bit any bigger, and uh, every year I make it a little bit bigger. <laughs> and this year is no uh, exception. Uh, but I've never done a video before building a terraced garden. I did a little experiment with a terraced garden last year, but I wasn't happy with my results. So this is sort of like terraced garden point two, um, this particular bed here. So I've made one terrace bed here, and I'm actually going to make another one right here. And I'm going to film the whole thing, probably speed some parts up like that. It's a, it's a bit of a production, especially on uh, the slope. It's kind of treacherous and difficult to uh, navigate. But uh, anyway, I'm going to film the whole thing and uh, explain uh, why I'm doing what I'm doing and why the results I think I'm going to get and why I'm doing that. And then, of course, over the gardening season, because I do a garden tour every month, you can see how it works. Um, this, uh, these beds are outside my garden enclosure. I've got a fenced garden enclosure here. These are on a south-facing slope, ideal location for lots of things. So there's things I can grow here that uh, are sort of deer-proof and uh, porcupine-proof and rabbit-proof and that sort of thing. Uh, for the most part, I don't really get rabbits here. It's pretty dangerous, pretty bad neighborhood for a rabbit given that we've got uh, bald eagles overhead almost all the time. <laughs> Eagles, ospreys, hawks, we've got a number of different flying predators, owls, uh, they're all here. Um, but anyway, so I can grow potatoes up here, I can grow pumpkins up here, I can grow uh, garlic, onions, you know, there's a range of things that are, you know, uh, to varying degrees, deer proof, that will grow just fine up here. But I mainly am building these beds because it's such a sunny spot uh, to grow, um, to grow pumpkins, uh, to grow, uh, I, you know, we want to have uh, ornamental pumpkins in our garden or uh, on our front step every year, and I just don't like growing them in the uh, the garden space because it's 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 such precious uh, you know precious real estate, and I want to, uh, that's for growing food. And I have some pumpkins that I grow that uh, taste good, but also are somewhat ornamental. But uh, the guy I buy my eggs from, uh, he grows a giant pumpkin every year, and uh, and every year I get it in my head that I'm going to get a bigger pumpkin than him. Uh, I've never really earnestly tried, so this year I built this bed. I'm still, you know, it's a new bed, so I think it'll be a number of years before the soil improves based on the way I build gardens. But, uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's get started and, uh, and uh, make this video. So uh, what I'm first going to do is, is try a couple different camera angles to show you what I've done here. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll go about making a copy of what I've done here. All right, so you can see from the side view here that I basically have uh, what I did was I that log right there I set that on the ground put some pegs in front of it to keep it from rolling down the hill and then I dug out all the soil on this side of that log and not only did I peg a log here but down a little further I pegged another log in place and all this sort of rock clay you know rubbish soil that's on the hill here I shoveled that all out of that space, dug it down as far as I could get sort of thing, and I used it to fill this space up. So this is basically a place to stand <laughs> while I'm tending the garden, right? So I'm not falling down. So I, I basically put clay and rock here, and then I pounded it with a, a pounding tool that I have to sort of flatten it out. So it's just a place to stand. That's reasonably level. Right, and then I put rocks. I don't think that's, that's just uh, no real reason why I did that up there. I just... It's kind of a make work project for my son because he <laughs> needed something to do <laughs> getting into trouble so <laughs> I got an 11 year old so I, uh, actually if anything these rocks should be below down here uh, to to you know gather heat and you know emanate the heat up but uh, uh, I didn't want to put a bunch of clay like that above the bed because it would uh, divert water I, I put rocks there mainly so that there'd be sort of something somewhat weed proof up there it's really not that weed proof but it would allow the water to get to run down the hill and get into here um, so once I cleared all the sort of rubbish soil and rocks out of there and made that step then I brought good soil up down from there's a there's a place on a, a bank over there that I just sort of removed wild soil from sort of thing and put it in there and then emulsed it. That was basically the idea. I put a bit of rotten logs underneath it as well just to hold on to moisture but not that much. So that's the general idea. That's what I did there. So now I'm going to just build another one. So 
So the first thing uh, I got to do is uh, get some logs. Want run for one for the garden and one for the step below the garden. Thankfully, I already got some of those. I had a tree fall down in, in a, a windstorm uh, very recently. So uh, I bucked the tree up, but I saved a couple pieces and I, I peeled the bark off of them. Uh, you might ask, why would you want to peel the bark off uh, a log that you're going to use for a garden bed? Um, the, it just takes long. It, for some reason, it uh, probably because it, it's able to dry out. Um, the logs take longer to rot out if you peel them. Um, this is just... Uh, from a spruce tree. I did the bulk of the barking using this thing called a, a improvised spud bar, I guess, basically. It's just a, a stick sharpened to a wedge, right? You, you, get, you get the bark started and you just sort of work your way down and, and you pry it off. And uh, you, you'd be surprised how well it works. And uh, not only that, but using this as opposed to using an ax or a knife or something like that is just safer, right? <laughs> If you're a guy like me, who always seems to be injuring himself. Uh, it's good to have an element of safety. It makes it's good to have a couple things that are cut proof. Uh, so I came here out here one evening and just peeled the bark off. This probably took five or ten minutes. So these are all ready to go for that. Now I just got to carry them up the hill and get them over there. All right. So the first thing I got to do is get these logs up the hill, and it's a bit of a ways to go, and it's. It's uphill all the way and it's a bit treacherous and uh, this one in particular is heavy. I would say this is probably at the limit of what I could pick up and put on my shoulder at my best. And I'm not at my best right now. I got a, a broken toe from a number of days ago. So uh, I'm still able to walk around but uh, I got to be careful. Uh, I guess a lot of people would say what I'm doing right now is not careful. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so, uh, and I recognize that lots of people watching this uh, they couldn't pick up like a, you know, 150, 200 pound thing, throw it on the shoulder and go anywhere with it, right? Um, so I'm going to show a couple of techniques for moving heavy, st heavy stuff around, um, you know, uh, without using machinery. Because um, so many of the YouTube videos I watch, these homesteading videos, I mean, they're using like tractors and stuff. And I mean, um, sure, if you own a tractor, that's handy. But most of us uh, don't own tractors. And, and by the way, tractors aren't cheap. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't find it very, you know, useful or instructive um, if you're using all this gear to move stuff around in a video, because it implies that the other person, watch, person watching the video, needs to buy that gear or using an ATV or something like that. I mean, that's a, you know, uh, an expensive purchase, an expensive thing to own, an expensive thing to operate. Um, you know, my car cost about as much as a good ATV. Uh, my car is infinitely more more useful. <laughs> than an ATV, given that I can drive on the street with it um, uh, in traffic and such. So uh, anyway, a couple ways to move heavy stuff. Um, both these ways I'm going to show you, you're picking up one end and dragging it, because if you're only picking up one end of it, you're only carrying half the weight. <laughs> and uh, of course, you can set it down anytime you want to sort of recover a little bit. So like when, you're, when you get something up on your shoulder, you're, you're completely committed. Um, whereas when you're dragging at any time, you can just, you know, set it back down and, and take a break. So this tool here is called a Picaroon. These cost, I don't know, anywhere from 60 to $100, I guess. I'm sure you can get them cheaper. And I'm sure at yard sales and stuff like that, you can get them for 5 bucks. But it's just a... Actually looks like, uh, like an old medieval weapon. Probably was. You go through armor very well. But anyway, it's got a hook at the end. Some people call them Hookaroon. Okay? And you drive that into the log and it uh, buries itself in the wood and doesn't come out if you're pulling on it. it. It's handy if you're splitting wood because you can just use it to pick up logs and you don't have to bend over as much, so it's a real back saver. But it's also good for dragging logs. You just sink it in and pull, right? Anytime you want, you can just let go of it and catch your breath. So using this technique, you can just work your way, you know, gradually up a hill with a picker uh, And when you want it to come out, you just push it down and lift up and it comes out no problem. <laughs> Of course, uh, there is the risk of the thing coming out when you're pulling on it. You get, you got to sort of reestablish, you know, the, the bite it has on it every once in a while, just to make sure you wouldn't want to be, you know, maxing out with your strength and have it come out. You just fall down. So anyway, that's that's one technique. All right, so the picaroon is one way to move a log around, but let's say you don't have a picaroon and you can't get to the store to buy one, maybe. <laughs> um, but you do have uh, some good strong rope heavy rope like this. This is rope literally I fished out of someone's trash years ago. 
useful in so many ways. Uh, you got a nice uh, heavy nail, and this is just a cheap dollar store hammer. So uh, take that, drive the nail into the log about, let's say, uh, one hand span back from the end, on a slight angle away from the end. All right, like that. Let's put this <laughs> somewhere where it won't get lost. Now we double up this this rope. This rope's about uh, oh, I don't know, 20 feet long, give or take. So we got the loop end here. Pass it. Pass it underneath the log, behind the nail. Oh God, that's wet. <laughs> Put it through like that. And all you gotta do is cinch it up. So that the knot is be be behind the nail. Then you just take the rope, put it around your waist like this. So you got, basically your, your fist is in front of your waist. And you can just sort of go like this. Right? And you'd be surprised what you could move, even if you're a relatively small person, just doing that. This basically puts all of the strain into your legs. And you're, you're basically taking your back out of the equation, or for the most part. So you're, you're basically lifting with the, your legs, and you're ensuring that you lift with your legs. And you've got both your feet on the ground. So you're, you're taking the least amount of risk of falling down. And you're getting most out of your, the most out of your body in terms of the power you have available to move things. So let me uh, back this camera up and I'll show you the whole scene of me moving this thing up the hill. <laughs> If you watch a lot of documentary videos, you probably realize that the way I'm moving this is kind of how they hook something up to a horse or a draft animal. <laughs> Same idea, except that you're the horse. <laughs> All right, so it's time to uh, put a, uh, sharpen these pegs. Uh, as always, you know, when you're working with an ax, have a setup where if you if you miss what you're aiming for, can't go into you, right? Um, using the same axe I used to cut down the tree, it's a little bit big for this operation, but I'm holding it right by the head to get control over it, right? Anyway, my general idea is to cut one side and cut the other side. Right, like that, and you just make your point. Doesn't have to be perfect. Like that. That's it. Rinse, wash, and repeat 14 times. Also, notice that I'm I'm not holding the. Uh, I'm not holding it straight up and down and hitting towards it. That's just a recipe for disaster. Right? I'm, I'm tilting the wood and I'm, my axe is going straight down. And I'm tilting the wood to make the angle. That way if it misses, it'll go into the log. Right? If you're going like this, uh, you're just asking for it. So Once you get going with this sort of thing, you can get it done pretty quick. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so here we are with uh, the building. Uh, now that we got all the materials we need, we're, we're building the trellis. And what I'm doing first is putting down a couple of pegs and I'm putting a log in place that, uh, this is not the actual uh, what is it, trellis, terrace. This is not the terrace garden. This is just the place I'm gonna stand to access the terrace garden. That's the first thing you make. 
<laughs> if you're making a terraced garden, you're making on a slope, and I mean, it would, if it's a very, very, very gradual slope, you probably don't need to do this, but if it's a very, very, very gradual slope, you probably don't need a terraced garden. So uh, this slope may be uh, oh, 612 pitch or 512 pitch, something like that. You know, it's not 45 degrees, it's like half of 45 degrees, I would say, give or take. So yeah, all I'm doing right now is I'm building like a place to stand, a, a piece of level ground that's going to be in front of the um, terrace garden. And I'm just pulling some rocks down off the hill to fill up, you notice there was a bit of a gap there. So these rocks fill up the gap and just fill that space in. That's the general idea. Um, now once you get that done, then you got to get the, <laughs> you got to take the pickaxe to it and get that happening. Um, but uh, this, this hill has so many rocks and so much stuff like that. It's <laughs> they got They kind of have to be. You know, I'm, I'm taking the rocks from the space where the terrace garden is going to be, right? So now what I'm doing is digging out where the the base. I'm digging out the soil where the base log of the terrace garden is going to be, so I can put that in place um, and some and, and just leveling out the soil where the standing place is going to be. That's the general idea. And I'm using this, uh, uh, I, I call this an old man's pickaxe. <laughs> it's a very, very, uh, it's a, it's a one hand pickaxe um, that I got at a military surplus store that I fitted a, uh, a full length, uh, I guess like a four foot handle to. And uh, what a, what a wonder, I can't, I just can't say enough about this, <laughs> this sort of little light pickaxe. It's, I mean, the soil here is just clay and rocks. It's pretty hard. It's not, you know, it's basically, uh, what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to put the pieces of the frame of the terrace garden in place and remove this soil and replace it with decent soil. Here I've just got a pounding tool. It's just a, a piece of a log that uh, drilled a hole into and jammed a broom handle in. Uh, perfect sort of good thing for tamping down soil. Um, so now I got a reasonably level place to stand so I won't fall down the hill and now I'm digging out uh, a spot for the base log of the terrace garden to go and that's the base log there I say that logs about eight inches in diameter give or take and now I'm pounding the pegs into place uh, one thing I didn't mention when I was doing the little segment where I was cutting the pegs is and you're gonna see why this is the case but um, when you're the kind of wood you want to use for pegs, you don't want green wood. You want, if you can find trees that are the right diameter and dead standing. I mean, if you can find old broom handles and stuff like that, that are pieces of metal or rebar, you know, that's the ideal material. But if you're going to use, if you're going to use trees <laughs> like I did, um, you don't want green trees. You want dead trees because, see that one I'm pounding in there? It's all split into pieces. Um, the green, this is spruce I'm using here, but the, when it dries out, when it's dead, it's really hard and it pounds, it's uh, sort of ideal for pounding. You see the one I'm pounding now, it's not falling apart. And I think this one's green and it's just going to smash to pieces as I drive it in. See how it's all splitting open and going to pieces? So <laughs> I think I just stopped pounding it in there and I decided I was going to get the uh, uh, a saw and just, just saw it off. Um, so here's another day. It took me a number of days to do this because uh, I had a broken toe. <laughs> <laughs> that a, the crowbar fell on, uh, chisel end on the toe, split it open. Uh, anyway, uh, so I had to sort of, uh, you know, I just couldn't, it really took the wind out of my sails for about three weeks. Uh, just, I mean, I was still doing stuff, I just had to sort of hobble around and do everything in a slow way. Uh, of course, I look like Superman here with everything sped up. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just had to sort of be very careful with it and not, uh, not re-injure it. So now I'm actually working on the part of this thing that's going to be a garden. So I'm excavating in a sense. I'm taking this useless soil out. Uh, you know, uh, you can see. So I mean, where, where I'm standing, there's nothing growing really. And it's because nothing wants to grow in this soil. It's just such poor stuff. Uh, it's just rocks and, and, and clay and just. Uh, I mean, you know, given enough time, you know, after season after season after season of different kinds of weeds growing and you know eventually it will you know that will improve but I mean the reason it's hardly anything instead of it being knee-high 
you know, grasses and weeds and stuff like that, and it's just sort of being barren it's because it's not very good soil. So uh, rather than uh, fight with that soil and, and wait for it to improve, which would take years, uh, I think it's just, in, in the case of this where I want to grow squash, whew, I'm not kind of out of breath from moving that rock, but uh, I think this is a whole other day here. It looks like it's rained. Um, yeah, because I'm trying to grow squash here, pumpkins, uh, I need good, rich soil. So I'm going to bring soil up from one of the, uh, uh, you can see down the left-hand corner of the screen, I've got two hoga culture beds where I, I just pile like weeds and all kinds of different things and leaves and stuff in with the soil. and They're kind of like compost bins, I guess, but I'm not composting any kitchen scraps. I'm just composting, you know, different kinds of yard waste and things like that. Uh, so uh, I think I'm adding a little bit more soil to the walking path there because I didn't think it was uh, high enough and I wanted it to slope a little bit so rain would run off of it. Um, you know, it's weird. I jammed as much of that uh, sort of clay. It's almost pure clay there. I jammed as much of it uh, in, as to, uh, pounded in as tightly as possible on that little walking step. And uh, there's still weeds coming out of it. <laughs> See how I'm kicking it in there? I kicked it in because I thought, well, if I pack it in this tight, what could grow out of that? Well, two foot high weeds, that's what can grow out of that because <laughs> that's what I get there now, right? I made this video back in uh, early May. Now it's mid-July that I'm uh, doing this voiceover. Uh, anyway, yeah, just digging it out, continuing to dig it out. And, you know, it's just a kind of a tedious process, but, you know, that's, that's gardening. <laughs> I think the other walkway at this point in time here, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of this. I noticed there was a spot in the other walkway. You know, if I could do it all over again, uh, I would have shoveled the stuff into the little walkway and I would have maybe sprinkled, uh, I don't know, maybe like a gallon, uh, four liters of um, Portland cement uh, in with the, it's just, it's just clay and rocks. There's hardly any organic matter in the soil. So I think I would have sprinkled Portland cement and just mixed it around a little bit with my, um, uh, rake before tamping it down with that tamp. It was enough moisture in that soil that I think if I'd mix some Portland cement in with it, uh, it would have just made like <laughs> like a concrete slab or something resembling a concrete slab. Um, I mean, even the clay, I mean, it's been over a month since I made it and it, it's kind of intact still. It's looking pretty good. So, uh, um, anyway, uh, putting this thing up at the top. I don't really need this thing at the top per se. I just... Uh, I think I just did it maybe for aesthetics or just to have a, you know, a, a, to define what is and what is not garden using a, using the axe there for the spacing. Uh, you know, maybe the axe is probably not the best pounding tool for this, right? Maybe a mallet or, you know, a wooden mallet is probably the best. A uh, heavy wooden mallet or, you know, just a, you know, uh, you know two pound hammer or something like that. But uh, anyway, I just, that's what I had. <laughs> I tend to just use what's lying around sort of thing. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're doing work on a hill like this, you don't want to bring a ridiculous amount of tools up the hill because you just got to bring them back down the hill and the axe works fine. Uh, so uh, here I'm just, um, I think I'm carving this thing out to use as an end piece to sort of frame up that outer side of the, the bed. Uh, I could see myself building this terrace all the way around the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know when to stop making gardens sometimes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, I think that piece was a little bit too long, so I cut it down and cut it to size. <clears throat> That's all I'm doing there. And just fitting into space. Everything's uh, this here doesn't have to be pegged in too aggressively because it's just being held in place with, uh, with gravity, that sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what am I doing now? Uh, I think a couple more pegs just to hold things in place, keep that where, where I want it. You know, if you're, if you're going to ask me how long, you know, is it worth doing all this work? How long is this going to last? I, I would imagine this, this bed will probably hold up with the logs peeled like this. Maybe seven years, you know, uh, that's a good round number. Maybe six, maybe eight, maybe ten, maybe five. <laughs> yeah, I'd say seven. Uh, I'd, I'd put, you know, I'd, I'd lay a hundred bucks down and it'd be last seven years, might last a little longer. Um, I wouldn't lay 500 bucks on it lasting seven years. <laughs> it's too dear. <laughs> anyway, uh, just using up my pegs here. I think that's, is that, jeez, Greg, I know, I think that's enough pegs. 
Uh, Alright, so now we've got this thing. I think I still, if I'm not mistaken, I think I still had to dig some more of this stuff out. I think I had, yeah, so, you know, it's, it's no point in using the axe uh, too much. There's another day I've got that crazy hat on because the black flies would have been at the height of black fly season. You can see my garden, there's hardly anything growing in there, right? You can see how long ago I shot this video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think the flies were quite bad, so when the flies are bad, I put that crazy hat on. It seems to, you know, I don't mind the flies being around, it's just when they go in my ears, they make me crazy. So, <laughs> I find with something like that, uh, it actually works better than a hoodie, believe it or not, and you don't get quite as hot. Uh, so, yeah, just working away at that and, you know, clearing all that up. Uh, yeah, I apologize for not... Uh, voiceovering this video. I, I tend to like to put the videos out as I'm making it because you wouldn't really want to do this this time of year, right? This is the sort of thing you might want to do in the fall for the following year, right? Early spring and fall, you know, when you're, you know, either, that's when you want to build gardens, right? And that's when I was doing this. Um, I was just uh, so busy and uh, uh, for a variety of reasons, I just did not have the time to edit this video and didn't do the voiceover. These kinds of videos with voiceovers and all this kind of sped up and editing, and they just take more time than a typical video. They're kind of a, they're, they're a process. They tend to be, tend to get a lot of views and people tend to like them when I do them right. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot more sort of, a lot more care and attention has to go into them. <laughs> you can see I'm really, really giving it to that pickaxe. Um, and, you know, it's a spruce handle. Just see, you know, people give, you know, oh, it has to be hickory, it has to be wall, it has to be this wood, it has to be that wood. That's a spruce tree from my backyard. And you can see how it's just wailing away at it. It's fine. <laughs> you know, you can't, I wouldn't want to go uh, breaking rocks with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, spruce is just great stuff. I mean, it's, it's not the best handle material, but... Boy, it's you know it's probably better than a lot of things. I remember I made an axe handle once out of uh, poplar, and uh, I broke it. <laughs> no, I broke it trying to break a rock. <laughs> so literally, <laughs> I think it just puts so there's so much vibration that goes into it um, that uh, I don't think uh, you know it can take that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, spruce is very tough, and it actually holds up to the weather very well as well. So it's it's sort of an underrated material. I think that's been um, you know, I, I, I linseed oiled that. Um, I made that in the fall, and I linseed oiled it over the winter and just let it put a really good layer of linseed oil and just let it soak in. And I like to give all my handles a good linseed oiling uh, once a year, usually sort of at the end of gardening season, so it can just sort of soak in and, you know, it's ready to, ready to rock for the following season. I oil, oil my tools and linseed oil the handles um, in fall. Uh, just adding a little more um, dirt to the walkway, and now I'm actually starting to fill this thing up. So I think I've, I think I dug it out maybe, oh, 12 inches deep sort of thing. Doesn't look like that, but it's just the camera angle. So I'm putting some weeds down there, just some compost sort of thing, and uh, now I'm just bringing in soil. Uh, this, I don't think this is compost. I think this is there's a there's a place on my property where there's reasonably good good soil on a hill. So I just sort of, I mean, it's in with all these weeds and different things like that. So it's a bit of a pain to dig up, um, but it's reasonably good soil. Um, so uh, yeah, just bringing some. Of it. So way <laughs> uh, the direction you're looking at, if I go all the way back to where the fence is and beyond it. So every one of those buckets I was walking, like, I don't know, I don't know what you call that, uh, you know, 50 yards, 50 yards each trip. There's another one. So there's another 50 yard trip, <laughs> right? So each one of these trips, see, there off goes the jacket, <laughs> right? So <laughs> yeah, each one of these buckets is a 50 yard trip carrying a, you know, carrying a bucket of pretty clay soil. I mean, this, this stuff here is, uh, I guess, a mix of clay and loam, I would say. Uh, I don't know if this is more of the same. It's still more of that stuff. More of the stuff from just, um, yeah, the sort of area outside my garden that there's a certain spot where I find the soil is just more more loose and more more nice, I guess. It's not super soil, but it's I've grown things in it and it seems to be 
Uh, okay, and certainly after a couple seasons of being mulched, it gets darker. Now you can see this is a lot darker, so I'm putting the, the actual compost in from my... You can see top left-hand corner of the screen where those buckets are. I just gathered it from there, so I'm pulling that out of a garden bed <laughs> for this use. I think uh, that garden bed, get, uh, where I took these from, I got potatoes planted there this year. But look at that beautiful black stuff, right? Uh, I don't know how many more buckets of that I put up there, maybe two or three more, but I, try, I put on as, because, you know, all these things, you want to put it up as high as you can get it with the level of the, the lower, you know, log, because uh, you know it's going to compact a little bit over time. I guess that means I'm done. Uh, yeah, so I think, well, uh, oh, and then, of course, we got to put some mulch on top, right? <laughs> right, so uh, right now it's the middle of July, and I've got some, i got a garden tour coming up really soon, but... Uh, some nice uh, pumpkins growing in there, but that's the general idea. That's one way to build a terrace garden without spending any money. Just using logs and rocks and pickaxe and a shovel and a little bit of, you know, elbow grease. Um, but, uh, yeah, just some different angles of that thing. Uh, really happy with the way it turned out. And it seems to be growing pretty good this season. So... I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.